list at number 10, British Museum's Adult Room. Okay, young ones, hide your eyes, here we go. We'll kick this list off on a scandalous note. The British Museum, they have a long lost adult themed room, to put it lightly. The museum itself dates back to the mid 1700s. At its initial opening, the museum only let 10 people in at a time. Now, of course, it holds many more people every day, but some collections, not everybody can handle. In the Victorian era, the museum had a secret room for obscene objects, or objects that are deemed perverse. There's a part of a temple wall that shows, you know, the dirtiest deed being done. In the collection includes a Roman terracotta lamp that depicts a naked woman on a crocodile. Number nine, flesh-eating beetle room. Okay, enough about ancient butts. Let's move on to the weird, shall we? Chicago's Field Museum. This one's chock full of secret rooms. I'll mention one more on this list later on, but I have to include the flesh-eating beetle room. The Field Museum uses real hide beetles to clean its specimens in order to get each of these carcasses ready for showtime. These beetles are on the clock. They're business-oriented. In just a few hours, a small rodent can be completely cleaned. Number eight, Naples Secret Adult Room. Okay, we can all agree that last one was pretty disgusting, so I'll liven up the mood once again with some scandalous Pompeii excavations. After the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, the small city of Pompeii was of course covered in hot ash. Now the ancient Roman ruin is still being uncovered today, but back in the 1700s, most of the lost city was excavated for the first time in history. And the king of Naples got the best of the best, right? Who's first up, first dibs. Most of the contents are now kept in the archeological museum in Naples, but some have to be held in the secret room. In the past, you had to receive permission from the king himself to take a quick peek at the sensual art. Number seven, Medici chapels. This one begins with an epic discovery, okay? Back in 1975, the director of the Medici Chapels Museum in Florence, Italy, was searching for a new exit route for visitors. He was trying to expand whilst controlling traffic a little bit more, right? We love big moves. Now, in doing so, the director himself stumbled across this trap door beneath a closet. There also lies a few clues on the walls. There are sketches and drawings the style of which seems to belong to one Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, this is pretty big news. This room was immediately closed for renovations. It was held a secret until 2020. So for many, of course, this is still widely unknown. So I hope you learned a thing or two so far in this list. If you live in the area, go check out some ancient trap doors in Italy. There you go. Number six, secret insect room. If you're in Liverpool and you love insects, oh boy, do I have just the tea for you. Let's go. Inside the World Museum in Liverpool lies a secret room and inside it contains around a million insects. Sex. Don't worry, don't worry, these ones are dead this time around. This collection began back in 1855. The 13th Earl of Derby, he's like, you know what? I need a cupboard full of shiny bugs. Let's make it happen, gang. Yeah, let's do it. Thousands of specimens now hide in this room, including the world's largest beetle and a moth with the largest wingspan. Big old shirt with wings, there you go. Imagine Night at the Museum, but it takes place in the World Museum in London. Bugs everywhere. Ben Stiller would not make it out. No way. There would not be three sequels. Number five, restricted Aboriginal art. While some collections are kept out of sight for museum visitors because they're, you know, extremely scandalous in nature or they're live bugs, others are kept in secret rooms out of respect. In the National Museum of Australia, David Kaus, senior curator of the museum's Aboriginal programs, he wrote this long report explaining the choice to hide these artifacts from history. Now, David himself has said, and I quote, that it is the responsibility of museums to respect the cultures they want to depict. The public use of Aboriginal secrets and or sacred objects is not consistent with this responsibility, end quote. In order to gain access to these restricted Aboriginal objects, these beautiful pearl shell ornaments, you need permission from traditional Aboriginal custodians. Can't just get a fast pass and go take a peek. Not that easy, my friends. Number four, Vatican secrets. The Vatican archives are 53 miles long, so there's a lot of secrets hiding down there, okay? There's around 35,000 volumes of catalog. The Vatican secret archives are no joke. They're very real, but in order to see them for yourselves, eh, it's gonna take some time. You gotta earn it, okay? Again, you can't just beep fast pass your way in. The indexes are not public, hence why I'm including them in this list. Only highly respected scholars can access it after they're 75 years old. Their official purpose is to house holy official paperwork, and of course, it's a treasure trove of anything and everything related to the Pope, as well as these long lost ancient documents. Cause I mean, because where else do you safely store a letter from Mary Queen of Scots, right? Dudes are out here hucking cakes at the Mona Lisa. Yeah, we're gonna keep these ancient notes locked up, I think. No one's gonna be hucking cakes at this one. Queen Mary of Scots was killed after serving roughly 20 years in custody, but eventually she was sentenced to death for conspiring to kill Queen Elizabeth I. But before she met her untimely fate, she wrote a letter to Pope Sixtus V, literally begging for her life in this letter. But of course, as we now know, the Pope did not 
intervene, and on February 8th, 1587, Mary Queen of Scots was executed. Now, when it comes to cursed items withheld from the public, this note is definitely up there. There's also a secret room that contains the 200 foot tall Tower of the Winds, only accessible through these secret archives, so we're never gonna see them. Number three. King Tut's Cursed Artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum was set to open in 2018, and then finally it did in 2021. And while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, like all of them discovered with him, will now be on display. Now prior to this museum being open, we only saw 150 artifacts from his tomb. They took all these pieces out on tour, like their kiss or something. But now this museum will house thousands of artifacts. We could all go and see it in one place. There's over 7,000 square meters it's quite a display. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum or if you saw this King Tut world tour on the road, I'm jealous because many of these artifacts were held aside from the public because they were deemed cursed. So if you visit, uh, don't touch anything, please. Number two. Deathly Pearls. If you've seen the movie Annabelle Comes Home, this next secret room in a secret museum should ring a bell. Character Daniela in the movie, she tries to communicate to a loved one beyond the grave. Now, in order to do so, she puts on a bracelet from Ed and Lorraine's Occult Museum. Now, there isn't a mourning bracelet in the real Occult Museum, but there is such thing as the Pearls of Death, and you cannot touch them, obviously. These are very real and they are very locked up. And they're also very lovely, might I add. I think they would look fabulous on me. These pearls were added to the museum after a woman claimed they were strangling her by themselves. The second this poor woman put these pearls on, she needed people around her to help yank the pearls from her neck. Yeah, these haunted pearls have nothing on Martha Wayne. Don't touch them. And finally, number one, a secret bowling alley. We'll end this list on a fun note because it's almost Friday and I'm here to have fun. And because this is probably the coolest one on this list, in my personal opinion. The Frick Collection resides in the former home of Henry Frick, of course. This is on Manhattan's Upper East Side. A handful of you have probably been here. Again, I'm jealous. This collection is a museum in itself. It contains paintings, sculptures, furniture, all historical, and all made from European artists from as far back as the 13th century. The mansion itself is rather new. That was built in 1913, and of course, it was also used as the Frick's family residence. A rich family in the early 1900s. You already know there's some secret rooms, right? Areas closed off to the public, but what's hiding in there, right? What are we missing? Well, we're missing fun, rich family stuff. Like, you know, a two-lane bowling alley built in 1914, and a billiards room, and a wood shop, and even a tiny diner, in case you get hungry. You and your rich purge family, you can go eat in a secret diner. There you go, enjoy it, 1900s. For number 10 now, we have the abortion clinic. We are beginning now with a really intense one, so I hope you are all ready. I have warned you. In 2012, it was reported that workers on a house in Missouri discovered a secret basement which used to be an illegal abortion clinic. The workmen found two human fetuses stored in jars there. They were protected by ceramic containers and covered with a cloth beneath an old medical examining table. The owner didn't seem to be surprised as he had heard rumors from his parents that the house was being used as an illegal abortion clinic back in the 1950s. Police were called to decide on what to do with the fetuses, but they said they would not be investigating any further. If that sounds like a very strange discovery. We are only just getting started. Moving on to number 9 now, we have Joshua's Room. A pair of house hunters in America were seriously disturbed by what they found in the basement of one house they were looking at. There were strange lookout holes in the stairs coming from the basement below. When they went down to the basement, they found graffiti written for what seemed to be a little boy called Joshua. The walls were covered with messages like, Josh, stop reading this and go to bed. Mom. Another read, Josh's rules. One, no watching Isaiah through the hole, and two, no writing or drawing on the walls. Another simply said, don't climb into my room, Isaiah. But for me, the most creepy one was stop watching me. Who were Joshua and Isaiah? Why were they living in the basement? And who was watching them? People still discuss this story even today. At number eight now, we have the gargoyle. In 2014, Imja user Hickensource shared their discovery of a secret room in their house. They said they were walking around their house one day when they noticed a window for a room they didn't even know existed. It looked like a cellar. Inside, there was a workbench fastened to the wall. Then he found a wall panel cut, which he peeled back to reveal a door behind the workbench. Through that door, laid a creepy looking room filled with junk. There were newspapers from the 1970s, old playing cards, a strange looking machine, and perhaps creepiest of all, an old gargoyle surrounded by broken bits of wood. Gargoyles are pretty creepy, even on a good day. 
extra creepy when you find them in a secret room under your house. No thanks. At number seven now, we have the squatter. This one comes from Indra user 2 Bite Brownie, who shared pictures of a creepy discovery in his house. He said he and his younger brother were playing around one day when one of them fell into a bookcase. It moved, revealing a hidden room behind it. They found a black staircase that spiraled downwards. By this point, they were already very freaked out. About halfway down, they found a crawl space, and to their absolute horror, it looked like someone had been living there. There was a makeshift bed covered in their own Halloween candy. They realized that whoever was living there must have crawled into their bedroom when they weren't there to steal candy from them before retreating back to their hiding spot behind the bookshelf. I think at that point, I'd either be running out the front door or just jumping straight out the window. Moving on to number six now, we have Black Mold. Jason and Kerry Brown were a couple from South Carolina who were renovating their new home in 2005. They began to remove some bookcases in one of the bedrooms when they discovered a hidden passageway that led to a hidden room. Nervously, they walked down the dark corridor and there, in the very small room at the end, they found a mysterious note from the previous owner. It read, you found it. Hello. If you're reading this, then you found the secret room. I owned this house for a short while and it was discovered to have a serious mold problem, one that actually made my children very sick to the point we had to move out. Kerry Ann Johnson were naturally very shocked by this. They eventually made contact with the previous owner who went into more detail about that situation. After some tests on the house, they found that it was true. The house had levels of black mold four to five times higher than the outside, potentially dangerous for young children. It seems that the house broker may have hid this information information when selling them the house. Perhaps they should be thankful to the stranger and their slightly creepy note. Moving on to number five now, we have Bad Stomach. In 2013, some Norwegian students said their landlord told them there was a secret room somewhere in their house, but not where it was. That's creepy enough, but they actually found it and they took these pictures. One of them said it took them a long time to discover it and said that it was actually found by accident when one of them was in the attic and just kind of stretched out. Suddenly, the wall behind them moved. Behind it they found a tiny area filled with items from World War II. There was a mysterious sign that read, if you have a bad stomach, you do not have access. There was also an alarm made of a single light bulb, an old map of Europe, and perhaps the most creepy object of all, a single white doll shoe. It was all quite a mystery until they were visited by some local historians who saw the post online. It turns out the room was used to secretly make newspapers during the Nazi occupation in World War II. Although they tried, the Nazis never actually found that room. All they needed to do was just stretch and push the wall. Simple. Next up at number four now, we have the crawl space. This one is a very small room. Very small indeed. Only enough room to crawl in. It was discovered in 2014 by Reddit user Lumberjack. He posted a picture to Reddit and what he discovered so far in it. The crawl space contained a strange looking locked door. Now through that door, there was a room where the walls, floor and ceiling were totally covered in soundproofing boards and a plastic tarp. There were also four power outlets in a small area that looked like a Ray's single bed. The creepiest part was yet to come though. He found a briefcase. Inside that was an old jewelry box, envelopes with currency from all over the world, and four one ounce silver ingots. There was also a safe containing some old tapes. He couldn't play them though, and so decided to hand everything over to the police at that point. They refused to reveal the results of their investigation, sparking fierce debate about what this creepy room was all about. My guess is spies. It's gotta be spies. What do you guys think? At number three now, we have The Stranger. This is another squatter story. In 2013, Brett Muglin and Mark Hartman moved into their new off-campus house for their senior year at Ohio State University. After a few days in their new home, they woke one morning and found every door in their house had been opened. Everything, room doors, the dishwasher door, the fridge dryer, washing machine, oven, and microwave, all of them had their doors open. At first they thought it was just a college prank, but one day they heard noises coming from downstairs. They grabbed a baseball bat and a knife and went to investigate. When they reached a the basement, they found a locked door no one had a key to, and there were sounds coming from inside. A few days later, one of their friends who was visiting said that they had met their new housemate, Jeremy, in the basement. Brett and Mark just froze and said, we don't have a housemate called Jeremy. At that point, they called the landlord and the police who went straight to that mysterious door. They prized open the door to find a secret room that a man had been living in the whole time they were there. 
there. There were pictures of him with his friends and family by the bed. The bed itself was unmade and there were books everywhere. The room even included a toilet and a bathroom. He had been using a secret side door to sneak in and out of the house. It turns out the man's cousin had lived in the house the year before and when they all left, he just set up in this secret basement room. I wonder how long he was planning on staying for. Next up at number two now, we have The Last Supper. In Hanny's restaurant and bar, there is a secret room you can visit if you know where to look. You may not want to though. Deep in this basement in Arizona, you can find these dolls on display. At first, it looks like they've been randomly placed, but on closer inspection, the dolls seem to be set up to mimic the famous painting of The Last Supper. I presume the doll in the middle is meant to be Jesus. Either way, it's a very creepy sight to see, even if you are expecting it. If you just stumbled across it while you're looking for the bathroom, well, it's probably a good job you're already on the way to the toilet. And finally, number one now, we have Peter Pan. In 2010, two women clearing out an abandoned basement in an old building in LA made a very gruesome discovery. They found the bodies of two babies from the 1930s. The bodies were wrapped in sheets and hidden in two doctor's bags, along with some crumpled 1930s newspapers and other belongings. The trunk had the name J.M. Barry on it. Now, she was a nurse from Scotland. She had the same initials as James M. Barry, the Scottish author of Peter Pan. Yeah, the Peter Pan. What's strange though is that there appears to be no connection between the two of them. A copy of Peter Pan and membership papers for the Peter Pan Woodland Club Resort were also included in those findings. Coroner said there were no signs of trauma on the babies or that they had been aborted. One had reached full term while the other was much smaller and could have been born prematurely. This mysterious and grisly case is still ongoing and many people online have taken it upon themselves to solve this mystery. Now we have Lucifer. Reddit user Ice. Your Face 1789 said that when they went to high school, it was a building that was hundreds of years old. One day, he and his friends noticed a hatch that was about six feet off the floor next to the toilets. During a drama lesson, not long after, they snuck out and climbed through that hatch. There was a small corridor beneath the actual corridor that they had to crawl through to get there. Through the vents, they could see other classrooms with the students learning inside. They squeezed through a gap in the wall and ended up in a large room that was much colder than where they come from from. They used their phones for light, but couldn't even light up the other side of the room. Also, something smelled really, really bad. That's when they saw the body of what looked like a decomposed cat, just some fur and bones by the wall. Even more scary though was the weird stone arch just above the cat that had writing on it. It said, if you are found here, the school will expel you, but Lucifer shall do much worse. There were a few scratches on the wall next to the writing and also some strange demonic symbols they couldn't make out. They took some pictures and made their escape. They vowed to never tell anyone else at the school for fear of expulsion, but also for fear of the devil himself. Moving on to number 9 now, we have the Pyramid Room. In 2016, scientists used advanced techniques to scan the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Despite it being 4,500 years old and it being studied by archaeologists for over a century, they found a couple of hidden rooms. Because of how old the pyramids are, the experts couldn't climb directly into the chambers, which were also very small. Small. Even today, they still haven't been able to get inside these rooms, which are believed to hold artifacts and furniture for use in the afterlife by the pharaoh who was buried there. Some people say these rooms were kept hidden and inaccessible for a reason, and that opening them up will unleash a curse on the intruders, as it did when Howard Carter opened Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. At number eight now, we have the Winchester Mystery House. This is a huge mansion built in San Jose, California by Sarah Winchester widow of the Winchester Fortune's heir. It took 30 years to complete from 1884 to 1922. The Winchester family were the ones who made the famous Winchester guns. Some people say that Sarah was scared of being haunted by all the people who had been killed by the hands of a Winchester gun over the years and so she decorated the mansion in strange ways to confuse the ghosts. By the time she died, the house had 160 rooms, 10,000 windows, 2,000 doors, 47 fireplaces and even a few spy holes. In 2016, years after she died, everyone was shocked to hear that a secret room had been discovered. Sarah had boarded it up after an earthquake in 1906, and some say it became associated with evil spirits. The room was filled with strange, dusty objects, including a pump organ, a Victorian couch, sewing machines, and paintings. Staff said they already knew about the room, and that it was actually a shooting gallery that they had installed. Some conspiracy theorists said this was a lie, though, and that they were trying to cover up the creepy discoveries in this long-forgotten room. Room. Moving on to number seven now, we have The Cellar. This one comes from Reddit user ZZ870, who said that 
one day as a kid his family were staying in an old bed and breakfast. The owners didn't like anyone going down into the basement. They said it was too dangerous because of all the rusty tools, and metal and pieces of lumber with nails sticking out. He decided to hang out there anyway because it had a spooky atmosphere. One day he decided to open the door at the back of the basement. He thought it would lead back outside but instead he found a cobblestone tunnel that led underneath the foundations of the house. As he walked along it got darker and darker and he noticed it was full of spiders. A door appeared to the right that led to a pitch black room. He was terrified by this point and turned his phone light on to see. This revealed a small light switch. He flicked it on and saw a table and a chair covered in dust. Random objects littered the floor. Immediately he thought this must be where the owners keep unwanted children or even torture people. He ran out and never looked back. He later asked the owners what the room was for and they said it was used to store potatoes. An unlikely story but perhaps a lot less gruesome than the truth. Next up at number 6 now we have the Nazi room. In June 2017 Argentine police were searching a house in Buenos Aires when they made a startling discovery. Behind a bookcase they found a door and behind that they found a huge hoard of World War 2 Nazi artifacts. After World War 2 many high ranking Nazis fled to Argentina to escape justice for their crimes. An art collector had kept many of the artifacts in that house but had kept them hidden for fear of repercussions. Among the Nazi objects was a magnifying glass that historians say belonged to Hitler, some Nazi daggers, children's toys with swastikas on them and a head measuring tool used in the disgraced practice of eugenics. At number 5 now we have the Parisian apartment. In 1940 a woman called Mr. Florian fled Paris as the Nazis arrived during World War 2. She packed only what she needed before heading to the south of France. She never came back. She lived out the rest of her life there but strangely she continued to pay rent on her apartment back in Paris as it gathered dust for more than 7 decades. When she died aged 91 her family found the apartment mentioned in her finances. They made the journey to Paris and when they opened it they were shocked. It was frozen in time. The whole thing was filled with all of her strange collections. Early Mickey Mouse toys, stuffed ostriches, erotic paintings, one of which went on to sell for 2.1 million euros. It appears that Miss Florian did not want the apartment to be discovered and hoped the room would be left frozen in time. At number 4 now we have the chapel. In 2010 Pa and Diane Fowler found a strange metal grid in their old Victorian home in England. They pulled it away to reveal a strange cellar which they never knew existed. After lighting up the darkness it appeared the cellar was actually a chapel. In the center of the room was a wooden cross which appeared to have fallen down and was now rotting away. An expert reviewed the room and said it was probably used as a catholic hideaway from religious persecution sometime during the 1700s. The family said that after they discovered the basement they went back upstairs to take some pictures. They took a picture of one family member Karen who was pregnant. When the pictures came out there was something white on the photo by her belly. The family thinks it's the orb of a ghost that had been released when they opened up this hidden chapel. Next up at number 3 now we have computers. This story comes from reddit user Jeffrey Goldberg. He said that in 2006 he went to a school that was built sometime in the 1800s. He said it was a big old building that stood 4 stories high. There were a lot of staircases there and in one corner of the building was a staircase that nobody had ever used. During his senior year Jeffrey and his friend were wandering the hallways when they decided to use this unused staircase. They noticed that it's spiraled down below. They followed it and went along a hallway and then found a door that was slightly cracked open. They stepped inside to find a large room filled with cubicles and dozens of employees on computers. None of the people on the computers were school staff. They were shocked and confused. They quickly turned around and left. They tried to return a few times later but the door was always locked. To this day they don't know what the room was for and who those people were. Do you guys have any theories? Next up number 2 now we have the attic wall. In October 2017 a man from Florida uploaded a video of him finding a hidden room behind an attic wall in what he described as the weirdest thing he'd ever seen. He was changing the air conditioning system when he discovered this tiny room in the attic of the house. It was covered in red carpet and even had its own ventilation system. There were two license plates on the wall along with a men's room sign. There were also a few empty pizza boxes just to add to the mystery of it all. It got even weirder when he found a makeshift toilet that the occupant would use 
used to pee. The man said he had never seen anything like it in his life. Many people online began wondering who or what would design such a comfortable space equipped with its own toilet. What were they hiding from? Do they still live there perhaps? The discovery produced far more questions than answers. Finally at number 1 now, we have the painting. Reddit user Acer1 said so that he once met a college girl at a defunct frat house in Wisconsin. They had lost their charter for some reason. He was about to find out why. The pair fell for each other and he moved into the place with her. Things were fine at first, but then one night when they were drunk, she took him up to a room that was empty. He hadn't seen it before. It had two bunk beds and above one bed there was a secret hatch. They went through to an upstairs room where most of the hazing rituals had taken place. Then she told him the story. She said that one night in the dead of winter, a girl was sexually assaulted by a group of frat boys there. They left her up there in the cold and she ended up dying from hypothermia. One of the boys was supposedly so distraught that he went up there the next day and painted her picture on the wall and then he hung himself. While they were up there, he said he swore that the eyes on the picture of the girl would follow him around the room. There were also reports of crying coming from the attic on cold winter nights. He said he never went up there again. Number 10 on our list. Let me give you guys some background information on this haunted house. The Riddle House is located in Palm Beach County in Florida. The house used to be a funeral parlor, so I'm sure a lot of creepy things went down inside of this house. But that's not even the scary part. One of the former employees committed suicide by hanging himself in the attic. And according to all of the reports, any time a man steps foot in the attic, his spirits will attack them. One man had an object thrown at his head, so now men are no longer allowed to go inside of the attic. I mean, I wouldn't want to step foot inside of that attic anyway, so you know what, whatever. If that wasn't enough, legend has it that the entire house is haunted, and if you go inside of it, a spirit might follow you home and haunt your house as well. I mean, yeah, no thanks, I don't want to be haunted, I don't want my house to be haunted, I want to go to my home and just be curse free and be ghost free as well. The Queen Mary sails onto our list at number 9. The Queen Mary has been voted one of the most haunted places in America, and this is by Time Magazine. And after doing my research, it's easy to see why. There are countless stories of many areas of the ship that are haunted with ghosts. Visitors claim that the engine room is haunted by the ghost of a crew member who was crushed to death by a watertight door. The swimming pool is also a highly talked about area as well. People say that they can see spirits at the bottom of the pool and they are just waiting to pull someone under the water and drown them to death. If that wasn't enough, you can go on a paranormal tour of the ship, but be warned, there is a curse. It is said that each year during one of these tours, at least one guest will break a bone while on board. The Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, Oregon makes their way onto this list at number 8. Did you guys know that in the 19th century, Portland was considered to be one of the most dangerous parts of America? It was primarily due to a form of human trafficking called Shanghaiing. According to the legend, con artists would prey on unsuspecting young men and they would lure them into trap doors. The victim would then be fed into a network of underground tunnels where they would be drugged, held captive, and eventually sold to ships as slaves. Hundreds of years later, these tunnels are still intact and it is believed that if you find yourself down there, you will be extremely confused, unable to find yourself back to the surface. You will have hallucinations and you'll also have a ton of angry spirits who will hold you down to the point where you feel like you can't breathe. I say if it was up to me, we filled these tunnels up with dirt and call it a day. The Banff Springs Hotel checks onto this list at number 7. This hotel was built in 1888 by the Canadian Pacific Railway. Despite its picturesque view, this hotel is plagued with angry spirits that will make your night a living hell. Some of the strange things that happened here was when a family was brutally murdered in room 873, a bride died while falling down the hotel's marble staircase, and a retired bellman apparently still haunts this hotel even to this day. But the fun doesn't stop there. The hotel has a room that is known as the Phantom Room. There was an error in the building plans which resulted in this extra room being built. It doesn't have any windows and no one knew that it existed except for the builders. But years later during a renovation, the room is discovered and it was converted into a working room. But apparently this room is cursed. It is full of unusual sounds, strange shadows, and you will feel extremely uneasy if you go inside. Leap Castle brings us to number 6. This is probably one of Ireland's most haunted destinations due to 
to its dark history. One of the most gruesome murders that took place in the castle occurred in 1532 in a room that is known as the Bloody Chapel. A priest was murdered in this room in front of his entire family. The castle is now rumored to be haunted by a ton of spirits, including a violent hunched beast known as Elemental. If you find yourself inside of this castle, you'll know that he is near because you can you can smell rotting flesh and sulfur, and when the castle was being renovated, workers found a dungeon that is only accessible through the ceiling hatch. I mean, how weird is that? It is believed that prisoners were thrown inside, forgotten, and left there to die. The dungeon also has a bunch of human remains and was full of spikes that were used to impale the prisoners who were thrown there to their death. Sounds like a great tourist destination, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Flight 191 takes us to number 5. We're now talking about a cursed airplane number. If you ever find yourself booking a trip, pay close attention to your flight number. Is it flight 191? You might want to consider changing your flight and I'll tell you why. This flight has a higher than normal amount of crashes. There has been four commercial flights with this flight number and they have all crashed. Another flight had an incident on board that caused the plane to divert from the flight plan. On an American Airlines flight, the plane crashed shortly after taking off in Chicago and it killed 273 people on board. A Delta Airlines flight crashed while landing and it killed 137 people, and a Calm Air flight crashed on takeoff, killing 49 people. There are a bunch of other airlines with flight numbers 191 that crashed, but I think you get the point. The San Fernando Cathedral, San Antonio, Texas jumps onto our list at number 4. We have another cursed cathedral on this list. This church was built in 1868, and it is thought to be the oldest church in Texas. Well, according to the local report, this church is plagued with angry spirits and demonic forces. People have seen hooded ghosts ghosts in monks clothing roaming the halls on a regular basis. Or they'll also see a man dressed in black who stalks you as you explore the church. And yes, the church is still open for business. So if you're brave enough, you can attend a service. Uh, that's if you dare. I, I don't dare. <laughs> Personally, I'm not really that big into angry spirits following me around, but that might just be me. Number three, we have King Tut's tomb. When this tomb was discovered on November 26, 1922, people believe that the pharaoh unleashed a powerful curse of death and destruction upon those who entered his tomb. I'd be pretty pissed too if I was untouched for 3,000 years and then all of a sudden there are a ton of people entering my tomb with tools and some lights. But let's explore this curse even further. The man who paid for the excavation of King Tut's tomb was the first one to be hit with a curse. While shaving, he accidentally tore open a mosquito bite which caused him to die due to blood poisoning. The archaeologist who discovered the tomb gave his friend a paperweight as a gift. The paperweight was made out of a mummified hand and it had some weird thing inscribed onto it. Well, after receiving this weird gift, his house burned down and when he tried to rebuild it, it was hit with a massive flood. A man who visited the tomb became extremely ill and he never really recovered. He died of pneumonia a few months later. There are a bunch of other unfortunate people who have mysteriously died after visiting this tomb. So I know one thing that is for certain. You'll never see me around this tomb. I'll be much more comfortable watching the footage on YouTube or something like that. Or maybe just Googling an image of what the guy looks like. Moving up on this list, number two, we have the 600 rooms in the Cecil Hotel. You're probably really familiar with this hotel due to its dark history. It's said that all 600 rooms of the Cecil Hotel are cursed due to the murders, maniacs, and ghosts that roam inside. A bunch of serial killers used to call this hotel their home, maybe because they all felt a strange affinity to it. And over the years, a lot of guests have mysteriously died without any reasonable explanations. One of the most mysterious deaths was Alyssa Lamb. Her body was found two weeks after her death when people were complaining about the water tasting weird. Her body was decomposing in the rooftop water tanks for weeks. The discovery of her body led investigators to watch the surveillance footage. They saw Alyssa go onto the elevator alone, then look outside the door several times. She left the elevator and it looked like she was having a conversation with someone who wasn't really there.
and that was the last time she was seen alive. And finally, number one, we have the Warren Occult Museum. If you know what's good for you, you'll never visit this museum, although I'm, I'm a little bit curious, but I would be pretty terrified inside of it. It is full of items that Ed and Lorraine Warren have collected over the years from their paranormal investigations. One of the most cursed items that sits inside of these walls is the Annabelle doll. I mean, everyone knows by now. She was responsible for at least one death when a young man came into the museum and challenged the doll to do its worst. And guess what? It did. Another cursed item at the museum is the shadow doll. This doll is said to be able to visit you in your dreams and she has the ability to stop your heart. I mean, yeah, no thanks. And you know what? My curiosity is over. I no longer want to go visit this museum. And at number 10, we have the Fritzel guest house. Joseph Fritzel was an abominable man of that we know. In 2008, Fritzel's house of horrors was discovered. Now, Joseph Fritzel and his wife Rose Marie actually used to run a guest house in the town of Untracht in Monzi in Austria. That was before they moved to Amstetten, where his house of horrors was later discovered. As you may know, Fritzel had been keeping his daughter imprisoned in the basement of his home in a secret room hidden from view. Eventually, Elizabeth managed to break free after 24 years, may I add. The Fritzel house, in which the horrid man imprisoned his daughter in a locked room, was eventually remodeled with the secret cell removed. However, it seems that the story wasn't over. In 2017, another secret room was discovered in Fritzel's old guest house. It seems that contractors working on the property once owned by the convict found a staircase behind an improvised wall leading to a secret room. This seems to indicate that the predator may have imprisoned more victims in the past that police didn't know about. Coming into number 9, we have an ancient chapel. To me this absolutely looks like a curse room. I'm straight up calling old hidden satanic place of worship here, but maybe I'm just being a bit dramatic. Take a look at this. Now for me, from the outside, this looks like a normal detached house in the UK. The house is in Telford and it's around 230 years old, which I know sounds old to a lot of you watching, but really, for the UK, isn't that old? Owners Pat and Diane Furler suspected it may have once been a pub. It looks like it could have been. One day they decided to investigate a metal grill in their floor. They definitely wish they hadn't. They broke through below the grill and found, well actually, let me show you some pictures. They found a totally eerie stone chamber that looked like an old chapel, it even had a crucifix on the floor. On the floor! They then found that there was a staircase leading to a cupboard in another area of their house, which to me is super weird and super freaky. Why on earth would someone be praying in secret? Also the way the cross looks on the floor, to me, is absolutely cursed. 10 out of 10 cursed. Coming into number 8, we have the missing Amazon. Amber Room. The whereabouts of the Amber Room remain a mystery to this day. Once a priceless art piece belonging to the Tsars of the Russian Empire, the Amber Room was dismantled and hidden during World War II. As you likely know, in World War II, Germany invaded Russia and the whole thing led to one of the biggest death tolls in the history of warfare. But before the Germans came, the Russians knew that they were coming, they knew that they were screwed, and they started hiding their treasures. The Amber Room, once considered the eighth wonder of the world was a whole room made up of old Russian money. Likely old Russian blood money, if we're totally honest. Either way, they wanted to hide the room. They didn't want the Germans getting their hands on it. To this day though, it's actually never been found, although it has been reconstructed. There's a brand new amber room, but not the original. So I'm wondering, do we even want to know where Russians hide stuff? Because like, probably not. Coming in at number 7, we have Down the Rabbit Hole. Okay, here's the headline for you. Rabbit Hole leads to hidden caves of the Knights Templar. What? The Knights Templar, for those of you that don't know, were a secret religious order who fought the Crusaders between the 12th and 14th centuries. In March 2017, a rabbit hole in a farmer's field was explored to reveal an ancient cave. Explorer Michael Scott found the historic wonder and said it was deathly silent in the caves. Can only imagine the horrendous stuff that went on down there, honestly. It's so freaky! Look at these pictures! Ma! Ah! Coming in at number 6, we have Walt Disney's Haunted Bedroom. Disneyland California was the OG Disney theme park. Opened in 1955, Walt Disney had several secret rooms built in the theme park, including a princess apartment in Sleeping Beauty's castle, the mysterious and elusive Club 33, and his very own apartment above the fire station on Main Street, which is kind of near the park entrance. It seems that ever since Walt Disney's passing in 1966, his old room has been haunted by his spirit. Now, according to Disney legend, a cleaner was tidying up his apartment 
only to notice a lamp was lit by the window, which was very strange because it had been unoccupied for some time. She then turned it off and went about her job. She was shocked to notice that the lamp had flickered back on by itself. She turned it off once more, only to see the lamp fire up again before her very eyes. Since that day, nobody has ever tried to turn the lamp off, and it has kept burning as a symbol of Walt's spirit living on in the park. Coming into number 5, we have this secret dungeon. When a video pops up in your YouTube recommendations with the title, Moved into a new apartment, Warning! Secret dungeon! You just have to click it because, I mean, of course you do, right? We're not idiots. We need to see this. I need to see the secret dungeon. So the description is pretty juicy. It reads, Earlier this week, I moved into a one bed studio apartment in England. I'd never seen the place before. I paid my deposit. And after I moved in, I noticed a strange hatch in the floor. It's an old converted 19th century monastery. So I thought there might be something interesting. As it turns out, we have a dungeon. It's every badly written horror movie happening in real life. Here's a video tour I made tonight. Whew, like I said, juicy. Okay, so let's skip the beginning of the tour. I'll give you the highlights just so you know. So, the lad is living in a small ground floor apartment, old building, high ceilings, old monastery, bedroom on a mezzanine level with mirrors on the ceiling, and we're gonna skip past that really quickly. Weird, but you know, yeah, nice bathroom tiles, kitchen, so on and so forth. But then, oh wait, what's that? It's a hatch. A hatch to where I hear you cry. Well, let's have a look. That looks like it goes in pretty deep. Okay, so he goes down in there and what does he see? Let's have some still images for you so you can get the whole picture because the video is pretty freaky and bumpy. Okay, I'm saying that is one of the creepiest things I've ever seen, but at the same time, adds a lot of value on the rent, right? Imagine all the storage in that murder bunker. Hurrah! Coming into number four, we have the tape room. Redditor Lumberjack went pretty viral with global news articles written about their creepy findings, which they posted onto the social media site. So it all went down in May 2014 when the Redditor posted images of a mysterious panel in the wall. Here it is. Okay, so obviously he opened up the panel. He then went on through a whole adventure through a carpeted crawl space in which he found a briefcase containing jewelry and a selection of foreign currencies. The worst discovery, however, was a box of video videotapes labelled from 94 to 95. One of the tapes was inscribed with no 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 on it, which doesn't sound great. We don't actually know what's on it though, the register didn't tell us. They also found a note that read, save yourself. Um, not looking so good. Lumberjack said that they were asked to delete the post by a local sheriff who was investigating a murder. Coming into number three, we have the walled up room. There is a Reddit thread on No Sleep called Never Buy a House with a Walled Up Room. And do you know what? Like, I guess don't. I think that's good advice. Don't do it. Why? Because of the old act of incurement, which is the act of bricking someone alive in a room until they die and then just leaving them there. Good, joyous. There have been so many instances of people tearing down false walls and finding bodies. In July 2013, the hidden skeleton of a woman who'd been missing for 28 years was discovered when contractors found a false wall in the basement of her old home. Another body was described as being skeletonized with the hands tied with a rope. Murder. Murder! It seems that also the bishop who haunts the infamous Borley Rectory in England was incurred. Bricked in a wall, he now throws bricks at passers by and like, I kinda get it. Coming into number two, we have the secret bunker of Denver Airport. There are a lot of rumors and legends that Denver Airport in Colorado is sitting on the top of a secret satanic layer. Hints and clues come from a hellish looking blue horse with glowing red eyes. What is this horse? Oh, it's only the Egyptian god of death. Good, great. Thanks, Denver. Also, the sculpture fell on its creator, who later died as a result of his injuries, so I'm not feeling good about it. There are also murals inside the building that look kind of swastika-esque, and also there are an uncomfortable number of triangles. Mm. The real crux of the conspiracy is that the airport is just so big. Like, why? Not all of that space is being used. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura thinks that Denver Airport sits above a giant apocalypse bunker for government officials. But the majority of conspiracists think that the underground labyrinth is used as a secret meeting spot for Satanists or the Illuminati. Denver, what is going on? 
coming into number one, we have the hidden chamber of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Most of you watching will have heard of the Curse of the Pharaohs. When King Tutankhamun's tomb was opened up in 1922, the legendary Curse of the Pharaohs was a main topic of conversation and continues to be an enduring legend. Basically, the archaeological discovery was dogged by a number of untimely and mysterious deaths from those involved in the excavation. This led many to believe that Egyptian curses are pretty real. Ok, so with that in mind, what if I tell you a whole new room has been discovered in the Great Pyramid of Giza? Hmm. The Heritage Innovation Preservation Project has been working with Cairo University and the Egyptian government to scan the Great Pyramids. Yes, scan, this is super hi-fi modern day tech stuff. Scanning. In 2017, the pyramid housing the tomb of the great pharaoh Khufu showed a mysterious and spooky void when it was scanned. Khufu. What a name! Khufu. I wish my name was Khufu. Built in 2560 BC, this weird void has been locked away and secret for over 4,000 years. Now, the void stretches for at least 30 meters above the Grand Gallery, an ascending corridor that links the Queen's Chamber to the King's Chamber in the heart of the pyramid. A void in the heart? I don't like the sound of this. I would not want to be the one who goes in to investigate this scary hidden room because, well, curse me once, shame on you, but curse me twice, honestly, shame on me. Humans, honestly, we just need to like leave things alone. Leave them to the Egyptian gods. Let them have their business. Secret room behind a bookshelf brings us to number 10. I know what you guys must be thinking. This has to be a hoax, right? Wrong. This stuff actually happens in real life, believe it or not. And maybe you have a secret room in your house that's waiting to be discovered. So right now, go around your house, start breaking down walls. Okay, maybe not. Okay, let's get back into this. We have two brothers who are playing around in one of the rooms in their house when the little brother ran into the bookshelf and it opened up and it actually led them to a secret spiral staircase that led to another secret crawl space. Sounds cool, right? Well, think again. A stranger was apparently living in this room and that's not all. That's not where this ends. The stranger must have snuck around the house and stolen items from them because there was empty wrappers from Halloween candy that was taken from one of the boys' rooms. Could you imagine having a creeper living in your house tiptoeing around, maybe, you know, watching you as you sleep? Creepy religious room is in at number nine on our list. A family made a shocking discovery when they decided to find out what was hiding underneath a large metal grate that was in the middle of their hallway. After removing Moving the crate, they found a hole that was just big enough for them to squeeze through. I'm pretty sure a small hole in the ground would be enough for me to not squeeze through it, but for me to, you know, walk away. But not for this family for some reason. Once they made it down the creepy shaft, they were in a small pitch black cellar that looked like it could have been a chapel. In the middle of the room, there was an old wooden cross that was slowly rotting away, and there were also hooks hanging from the ceiling, which could have been used to hang a meat. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm naturally confused here. Was this a secret chapel or maybe was it a kill room? I have no desire to find out what really went on in this cellar. So you know what? I think it's time that we move on. Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's see what we have next. And well, we're at number eight right now. Number eight behind the walls. A family decided to put an offer on their dream home in Pennsylvania after the home inspection proved that it was a solid house. But the home inspector missed one huge detail. He failed to look at the walls and the strange thing that was hiding inside of them. The family wanted to add better insulation into one of the rooms, so they opened up the walls and they found a dark secret. They found some old spice cans and newspapers that dated back to like 30s or 40s, but that's not where the weird part of the story is. Those newspapers were covering bones from animal corpses. After they tore up the rest of the walls, the smell became unbearable and the more they tried to fix it, the worse that it actually got. The family family got very sick from the dead animals inside of their house and they had to spend thousands of dollars trying to get rid of the animal bones. I mean, what happened and who put these bones in the wall? World War II hidden room comes in at number seven. A Reddit user from Norway posted some pretty disturbing pictures of a hidden room that he discovered in the attic of his house. Apparently his landlord told him that the house had a hidden room, but he was extremely vague on, you know, where it was. So instead of working or being productive, the renter thought that it would be a good idea to go exploring, be Dora the Explorer. Well, he accidentally found the room when he kicked a wall in the attic. And inside of this dark secret room was a sign that 
got read, if you have a bad stomach, then you don't have access. I mean, what the heck does that mean? I don't have a good stomach. I'd get the heck out of there. Why do I need a strong stomach? What is about to happen? Was he about to die? There was also a lamp alarm that was used to warn people nearby when someone came into the room and there was an old map of Western Europe. Oh, and also they found an old doll shoe that looked like it came straight out of a horror movie. I'd say you're better off boarding up that wall and forgetting this wall or this experience ever existed. The real life Dexter room slices its way into number six. A man was extremely surprised when he discovered a small passageway in his attic that was blocked by a locked door. Locked doors for me mean I'm not going to enter. It means I'm, I'm not that curious. Well, obviously this made this person curious and he decided to burst open the padlock to see what was hiding behind this door. Why do people do this? Well, he probably should have called his realtor and put the house back on the market because what he found was actually pretty terrifying. Once he crawled through the tiny space, busted open the lock, and opened the door, he found a soundproofed room covered in plastic with a platform in the middle and a suitcase. I can only imagine what went on in this room. Inside of the suitcase there was jewelry and several black tapes that had no, 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 and save yourself written on them. He handed the tapes over to the police and I guess we'll never know what are on those tapes, but I'm sure we can all take a few wild guesses. Maybe this was the real Real life Dexter house. And I'm not talking about Dexter, what is it called? Dexter's laboratory? I'm not talking about it was his house. I'm talking about the guy that murdered people. People staircase brings us to number five. Two people were house hunting when they stumbled across this extremely terrifying discovery. They made their way down a flight of rickety old stairs into the basement and they were pretty disturbed. Behind the stairs, they found an area that looked like it was being used as a bedroom, you know, of some sort. On the back of the stairs, there were creepy disturbing messages written on the walls. Some of the notes said, no watching Isaiah through the hole and stop watching me and also, is this real life right now? Okay, uh, that's that's something that I would write on the wall. I don't think they saw that on the wall. If they did, that's pretty cool. Well, what's going on here? When they looked even closer, they saw that there were small peepholes carved out of the stairs. So whoever was locked away in this room was able to see out. This is way too sinister for me. And I just want to forget the existence of this. So let's move on. A secret roommate jumps onto our list at number four. A secret roommate? <laughs> well, a group of students from Ohio made a shocking discovery when they found out that a man had been living in a secret room in their house. And you know what? He wasn't even paying rent. Well, that's probably one of the scariest things that could happen to you when you move into a new home. Make sure the new home is empty first. At first, the students thought that they were being haunted by a ghost because their cupboards were always left open and they heard strange noises. But as it turns out, the ghost, well, the ghost was actually a real person and the truth was way more terrifying. After they extensively searched the house, they discovered a room in the basement behind a door that led to a secret room. Inside, they found a double bed, a student's textbooks, and pictures. I guess college is really expensive because this guy was living rent-free for a very long time. The student quickly changed the locks and left a note for their unwanted roommate, telling him that he couldn't live there anymore. If it was me, I'd probably leave a note saying $800, please. And then you can stay in that secret room and I won't tell anybody. We don't have to get the police involved. A terrifying hideout takes us to number three. An HVAC worker was doing some renovations on a house when he suddenly discovered a secret room in the attic of the garage. He realized that a piece of the wall didn't look like it belonged. So he pushed on it, which turned out to be a hidden room. Inside, there were air vents, stained wood walls, carpeted floors, cable hookups, electrical outlets, and even a makeshift bathroom. There were some personal items thrown around the room and two license plates hung on the wall. At first he thought that someone was kept against their will, but the lock was on the inside, not the outside. So that takes that theory out the window. So this room was meant to keep people out. I don't know what is more terrifying. Well, as it turns out, this house used to belong to a man named RJ and his mother, Dee Dee Moore, also known as the Lottery Killer. She was convicted of murdering a man who won the lottery back in 2012. So maybe this is her secret room that she wanted to use to hide from the police. Number two, the secret prison cell. Christian Perez has been working as a home inspector in Tampa, Florida for many years. And during his career, he has stumbled across a lots of secret and hidden rooms, but he will never forget what he found years ago during one of his inspections. Whenever he thinks about it, he still gets the chills down his spine. 
He found a small dark room that was tucked behind a wall in the attic. It had a small bed, a strange map of a city, and also tons of empty food cans. So clearly someone's been living there. The homeowners who had been living in the house for the past 25 years, well, they said that they never even knew that this room existed. So could it be plausible that someone lived there for the past 25 years? During an investigation, no one was able to come up with a definitive answer for what this room was used for. But they speculate that someone might have been held captive there. And this is why you should always have a home inspection before buying. And I'm thinking we go one small step forward and anytime you buy a house, I think you should just gut it. The Murder Castle tops this list at number one. One of the most notorious buildings that was full of secret rooms was the Chicago Murder Castle, which was designed by the infamous serial killer H.H. Holmes. The entire building was posed as a hotel, but in reality, it was a maze full of secret kill rooms with winding passageways, trap doors, chutes, and dungeons that was full of acid vats and other torturous devices. When it was being built, he hired construction workers, and then he killed them so no one had any idea what was going on. He killed the people that designed the room, so now no one knows about it. The building had its very own crematorium so that he can use to, you know, dispose of his victims' bodies in secret. This has to be one of the most scariest things I've ever heard of. I wonder if there are other buildings like this in the world, and I'm willing to say that there, there probably are. I mean, this guy probably inspired a lot of other people, which is crazy to say.